All right. Today I'd like to talk about the Webster wire recorder and uh, just give a quick demo of some of the, the features. So it has a built-in like four inch field coil speaker and uh, it's a six SJ7 preamp tube, I think a six J5 and then a six V6. Um, and it has a 6x5 rectifier. Um, so this output switch up here is kind of interesting. It's got one, two, three, three output settings. Number one is the built-in speaker, which I'll demo here in a second. Number two is an external speaker, which right now I have uh, plugged into the output jack for that external speaker, plugged into uh, a forum load in... Uh, two 10-inch speakers. Um, and then it has the third position, which actually grounds the secondary of the output transformer and then takes a, a signal right off of the plate of that 6J5. Uh, and essentially turns this into a preamp only. Now there's, uh, I've seen floating around Reverb and a bunch of other uh, places, um, another unit that would often accompany this. I think it's the, uh, the Webster Chicago 66-1. And essentially it's just like an eight inch speaker with a power amp section only, uh, push pull six V6s and a phase inverter. And you can hook up the preamp of this into the power amp of that, and it's a nice, big, clean uh, tube amp sound. Uh, this one can get a little, little down and dirty, and it's a lot of fun. So first things first, here is the uh, built-in speaker. It's mic'd up with a uh, Shure SM57 going straight into the interface with no special equalization or anything like that. And uh, this speaker, I think, has some speaker rub, uh, and so I'm, I'm maybe looking into replacing it. It's a bummer to, to replace a nice field coil speaker like that. Maybe I'll leave it in because the auxiliary speaker output works really well and uh, sounds great into some other speakers, but yeah, you can't that. So, because that speaker's messed up, we won't spend a whole lot of time messing around there, but, you know, of course, we turn this up, and when it's overdriving, that little speaker with the buzz, you don't notice it so much, but the, the cool thing, that, that tiny little speaker gives this very high-pass, filtered kind of sound. <laughs> So, uh, thinking about that, let's try the uh, external speaker now. Uh, it's going into what used to be a Music Man 210 that uh, was gifted to me, and it was gutted when it was gutted when it was gifted. So, ah, yes, right. So back to sort of clean volumes here. I mean, a 
feels really good. I like that. And that's the single 6v6, single-ended output, going into a 4-ohm load there. And I essentially recapped this machine. Um, and that's the filter caps and the coupling caps. Um, but that's mostly it. Uh, I did remove uh, some of, well, of course, you might see back here, there used to be all the mechanisms for the motors of turning the wire that would record uh, your audio onto. I've removed all of that just to make it lighter uh, and because I wasn't using it. Similarly, I've removed a lot of circuitry uh, from here. Uh, there was a, an oscillator coil um, that uh, I think they use for bias, like in a tape machine. Um, that came out and uh, in went the input jack. Uh, over here, they had a tone control that was also the on-off switch uh, that was missing when I got this machine. So uh, in its place went the regular old on-off switch. And the output selector, I left that just because I thought that was kind of a neat uh, feature. And so uh, let's, um, let's crank it up a little bit now uh, and show you sort of how it sounds once it's being overdriven. And this is, you know, the guitar uh, straight in, uh, and the volume knob is basically just dimed out. And there's no tone control on this uh, amplifier. It's just uh, those two, two preamp stages and the 6v6 going on. So let's see. Yeah, OK. That's just crunchy goodness. Uh, and you may notice, let me try that one more time. Once you really start to crunch it, actually, let me turn off these lights. So once you really start to overdrive this uh, amp, they have a, a volume indicator right here. And it starts to glow once the signal's hot enough. I may play around with those values to see if I can get it to glow all the time, but it is kind of nice. It, right now, it serves as a nice indicator that you are crunching this thing. <laughs> So that's just a neon bulb and two resistors, uh, wait, two, two or three resistors uh, that create up a, a, a voltage divider from B plus to ground, and then they drop a signal from uh, from the plate of the 6J5, I think. So, so the same output signal 
that goes to the 6v6 and to the um, line output in output number three over here uh, feeds that lamp through a capacitor. And uh, it's just fascinating. It's fascinating that, uh, that that's how they did that. <laughs> Okay, so thank you all for, uh, for watching this video. There's still more tinkering to do on this thing, but it's just so rad that I wanted to share it with you all. So thank you all so much, and uh, check you later.